How is everybody today? Gloria Sunshine here. I don't know what it's like where you are. Oh, let me just turn myself off. There we go. That's better. Morning, Donna. How are you? Uh, hello, Gwen. Hello, Claire. Hello, Sue. Hello, another Claire. Hello, Alison. Jean. Oh, lovely. We've got a few people joining us today. That's brilliant. Um, what I thought, have you been on the coffee, Christine? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had enough coffee yet. That's what it, that's the problem actually. Um, so today is Tuesday. I had to think about that for a second. Of course it's Tuesday, I'm here. Um, and it's beautiful outside. I've had to get the uh, curtain over my window because otherwise it comes in and it's too shiny. And I can't see anything in the afternoons. So today I thought I would talk to you about one of the machine feet. Uh, this is quite a handy one actually and it kind of often gets forgotten it's a little bit sort of uh, dare I say it home dressmaky but actually it's a really useful foot to use and the one I'm going to show you today is the blind hem foot I don't know if Charlie can have a quick zoom I in on that zoom in as much as I can Move the camera up and I'll zoom in even more. There we go. There we go. That is a blind hem foot. That's a blind hem foot. It's got this little kind of Oops. fin. Oops. No, no, I'm lost you. Sorry. Yep. There we go. It's got this little kind of fin that sits between the toes of the foot and it goes all the way back and it's got like a little kind of a little sort of dimple, really, a little kind of curvy bit inside the fin. I don't know if you can see that at all. There we go. Um, and it's really, really handy. So if you want to come back out, Charlie, I can show you what it does. Um, you need to use it with a specific stitch. Now, when you're blind hemming, because what we're trying to do, let me rewind. What a blind hem does is it creates and sews a hem that you shouldn't be able to see. So it's a blind hem, if you see what I mean. Um, now I use on my, this particular machine, it's stitch number 12, but basically it should be a kind of a straight stitch that hops over and does a diagonal stitch and then does a couple more straight stitches and then hops over again. So if you've got one of those on your machine, that's what you're going to need with your blind hem foot. So I'm just going to clip that on my machine. So this is, it should come as a, a kind of a standard foot uh, with all of your gubbins when you get your machine. Um, but you can get them separately, obviously, for your machine. Just check the model number for your machine because different models will have a different width of claw for the Janome machines, or you may have a different system or if it's a Benina or a Brother or something like that. So do have a look at those. All few more people joined us, that's good. Morning, Jill, Patricia, Claire, Bernadette. Julia, Geraldine, hello. You've never used it. Oh, well, now's the time to have a play, actually. It's quite a good one. Now, I'm sewing on lighter fabric so that you can see what it does. Now, on here, I've basically, I was just testing it out this morning just to make sure that it actually worked. And what I've done on here is I just st started normally sewing with kind of a bog standard stitch. Now that's a little bit too tight and a bit close. There we go. So this is my sewing machine's default settings for uh, this particular stitch, which is on this machine, it's stitch number 12. So as you can see, it does about two or three stitches and then it does a half a zigzag and then another two or three stitches and then another zigzag. So, but this is quite close together. So this is on the normal kind of 2.4 default setting. And then what I've done is I've taken it up a little bit. That's about three. And then I've taken it up to five. So you can see the stitch length increases and the gap between the little kind of half a zigzag increases. There we go. Oh, there's lots going on in the comments. I need to have a little look at this. Uh, Otherwise, I'm catching up. Maybe Bernadette. Oh, 
You've become a grandma this morning. How fantastic. How fantastic. Congratulations, Thunder. That's wonderful. I think that's lovely. Nice bit of positive news, which is what we want, isn't it, really? That's fabulous. Uh, Debbie, oh, do we do click and collect? Absolutely, Debbie. If you, in the uh, comments, there is a click and collect thing that we're trying to set up on the website at the moment. But in the meantime, if you want to um, just order something and then come and collect it, then just let us know in the comments. And what we'll do is refund you the postage straight away. Um, the click and collect system will automatically deduct the postage, but we're trying to get the kind of back end techie side of that to work at the moment. Um, but if you do want to come and collect, then let us know. And what we'll do is we'll pop it in the box outside for you with your name on it and everything. So all you've got to do is just pick it up. And that means it doesn't matter what time, whether we're here or not, it will be in the box. It's quite secure. So um, you can come and do it that way, which is quite cool. Uh, there we go. Oh yes, Sharon, Sharon became a grandma again on Thursday as well, which is really cool. There we go. Uh, how to fold the fabric. Yes, when it comes to um, sewing your blind hem. There we go. Right, so basically, once you've got your stitch selected, now I'm gonna go back and show you what to do. What the aim of the stitch really is you want to sew the straight bit on your hem and it hops over onto the garment. Okay. So, so if you go in, go in again, so basically I'm just, this is my just test piece and I'll show you how to set it all up on your machine in a sec. You want to sew the, the, the main part of the stitching goes on the actual hem of your garment and then it hops over onto the main part of your garment because what you're gonna see on the right side are the little tiny dots where it's hopped over and just caught the folded part of your hem. So this will be the main garment. Now, obviously you would use fabric um, thread that matches so that it blends in a lot more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm setting up my fabric. So I've neatened, this is a sample piece, but it's my hem effectively. So what I've done is I've neatened the edge already with an overlocking stitch, but you could just tuck it under with, um, tuck under a centimeter and have a double hem if you wanted to. If you've got quite a nice sort of fabric that wants a nice weighty hem, I would do a double hem rather than just overlock it. Now I've just turned it up and pressed it. And I've got my pins going kind of at, at right angles to where I'm stitching. And that's quite important because what we're gonna do is flip this over so that we can sew it and keep the pins in at the same time. So what I want to do is, now if I've pressed up my hem like that, what I want to do is to tuck it underneath the garment. Does that make sense? I hope so. Uh, I like that. <laughs> Just looking at the comments, Julia says, if I'd known how much fun my grandkids would be, I would have had them first. I think that's really funny. <laughs> Amy says, if we click and collect, could I leave the cake in the box? <laughs> I think Charlie would be very happy if you yes, did that, Amy. Please. Yes, please. Um, yes. Oh, Morag says, it's a lovely day on the Mullock Entire. What did I say for myself at the weekend? Yes, I said I was gonna sew at the weekend, didn't I? If I'm honest, actually, I did a lot more planning at the weekend. One of the nice things about coming here on a Saturday is there's nobody else here, apart from Charlie, who's hiding in the other office, and he's usually got his headphones in. So, uh, and talking very loudly on Zoom. Not on no, not on a Saturday, not on a Saturday, no. <laughs> um, so I'm here on Saturday. And it's lovely, I'm in my own little space. I can have music on really loud to try and complete with, compete with the uh, drumming music school next door, which is quite interesting. Um, and it's really nice to have time to think, actually, a little bit of headspace. So I did do a few repairs. Um, I altered something that I'm in the process of making at the moment, did a couple of repairs on a couple of things, um, and actually, 
looked at a different system of pattern cutting, which was quite interesting. Um, getting a little bit nerdy now, I'm afraid. But I was doing a lot of planning for a big project that I'm working on. So that was kind of my Saturday. So not really too much sewing, a bit more headspace, really. But thank you for asking. Uh, there we go. Oh, Luann's off to Cornwall. I'm working, but it'd still be so nice. Oh, Cornwall. Do you know what? We looked at going to Cornwall. How flippin' expensive is it at the moment? Honestly, it was bonkers, wasn't it? Mm. It really was. So um, hopefully we'll be going down a bit later on. But anybody who's down there at the moment, just content yourself with the fact that I'm very jealous. <laughs> so let's get back to the hem. So what I've done, let's recap that quickly whilst, before I got distracted by the comments. There we go. So I pressed up my hem and I've pinned it in place. And what I'm doing is I'm tucking it back underneath the garment. So I'm just seeing the first kind of centimetre of the hem. So for me, it's really easy to see because I can see the overlocking. But if you've tucked it under, then you just want to see the first kind of centimetre of your hem. So now I can tuck that underneath my foot so that the fin is butting up against the edge, the folded over edge of your garment. And I'm just sewing onto the hem part. And I can see, because I've pinned vertically, I can actually see where the pins are holding my hem in place. So it makes it much easier to keep everything intact, but then I can pull the pins out when I need to. I hope that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm close up now. That's cool. Oh, Linda's down there already. Oh, lovely. And Luanne's putting on expenses. Oh, I don't blame you. Right, so what I'm going to do now, because I had my little practice go here, I know that I need to sew quite wide. So really, your stitch length should be above three and a half at, at the very minimum, really. That way you're gonna get enough stitches. So I'm gonna take out my first pin. Now, what you might want to play with is the stitch width, because really when I'm just dropping that down, I want to catch just a couple of threads from the folded part of the hem. So let's just have a little look and see how that's gonna work. So that's just hopping over. There we are. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my, the folded part of my garment is running along the edge of the overlocking. And that way I know I'm gonna keep it in a nice straight line. So it's literally just doing three stitches and then hopping over. Now, if I was working with a much thicker fabric, so uh, a boiled wool or something like that, then I would need to increase the width because I would want there to be a bigger hop over, if you see what I mean, to grab some of the fabric on the garment side. If I'm working with a slightly finer fabric, I might want to reduce it slightly so it's not taking such a big jump over to the folded section of your garment. And also, don't forget, you will probably want to use thread that's going to match. There we go. So what you can see on here, you can see, actually, this is quite nice because you can see just those little dips and you can see the little hop over where it's just caught the fabric on the main part of the garment. And then what we can do is fold that back over and you should just have a little line of pinpricks. Now, if you've missed some, it could be that your stitching's not quite, you haven't, you've kind of missed it slightly. So I've missed, this is when I was, this is where I was talking, see. I've missed a couple of, of spaces. That, in the main part, it'll probably be fine. But what it meant was that I'd got, I hadn't got it straight when I was sewing it. So yeah, I've missed that one there, but you can always hand catch that if you wanted to. It's just a question of making sure that you're sewing in a straight line and that you've got everything pinned properly. But that's me talking, not paying attention. See, that's what it is. 
but it's quite a nice one to do. So you can see how we've got the little tiny pinpricks there of the dark thread. Now, if you've got a thread that's going to match, then it's going to be a lot less obvious. So it's quite a nice, easy one to do this one. There we go. Uh, never mastered this. Does it work better if you don't press it? Um, I wouldn't press, so I would press your hem up first. Um, are you coming back out? There we go. If I can talk to camera again. Um, there we go. So we've got, I would press it up first and give that a nice press. When you fold it back again, I wouldn't press it because you don't want to have that crease in place because ultimately you want it nice and flat. So I wouldn't press it a second time. What you're trying to do is just to get it to hop over and just collect, just nick a few threads from the main part of the garment. So by doing that, not letting it, not creasing it properly, not folding it, you're just giving it that soft edge to capture. Does that make sense? I hope so. It's a nice one to do, actually. It really is. Um, oh, Lynn, you're late again. <laughs> but you've got the coffee and you're ready for the rest of the demo. It's a short and sweet one today, I'm afraid. I will show it to you again, though, because what I can do is if I fold over that bit, actually, what I could do is if I fold that over and crease that there, and then I can fold that back on itself again. So basically what we're doing, I'll do you another version. So this time, slightly more cack-handed. So all we're doing basically, it might be able to see it a bit easier on here. Yeah, so if I change the stitch, if I increase the stitch width, you'll see what happens. You get a bigger bite of that bit kind of coming over. Morning, Laurie, how are you? And Christine, hi. There we go. Actually, that's... There we go. So I've actually increased the width. Now you can see very, very slightly, there's a slightly longer thread that comes through. Uh, do you mind to... angling it towards there we go. the camp that clear, yeah. Yeah? Yep. So we've got little pin pricks here and I've increased the stitch width slightly so we've got a slightly larger bit. Now actually you could use this as a proper feature if you wanted to. If you wanted to have a contrasting um, thread with a slightly wider stitch length, you could actually use that as quite a nice feature. So if you'd got like a navy blue skirt or part of the dress and then had lovely orange top stitching, but you could have an orange thread on your blind hem so that just around the edge of the hem, you've got these little dashes, which could actually be quite a nice feature. This is part of um, knowing and understanding the different techniques that you've got. If you are increasing your technical vocabulary, i.e. you know what things do what, then you're increasing your chances of being able to use them creatively. So it's actually making a feature of something. Does that make sense? So normally you'd be trying to hide the hem, but actually why not make a feature of it? And you could even have a fabulous multicoloured thread. Um, somebody put a wonderful picture of a Regan that they'd done with um, grey sweatshirting and rainbow rib, and they'd stitched, done all the top stitching with a rainbow top stitch, which looked amazing, it really did. So if you'd got something like that, a rainbow top stitch thread, you'd have different flashes of different colour going around the hem, but it would be very subtle, so it wouldn't be like a top stitch, but you'd just have that little bit of something, and I think that's quite nice. So many things, it's all about the detail, isn't it? And that's what sets making your own clothes apart from buying stuff that's ready-made, really, which is quite cool. Uh, oh, look, just more comments here. Oh, Mary's commenting on, oh, lovely grandchildren. I'm not there yet, I have to say. I have no intention of being anywhere near there yet, 
but I will relish it when it comes. Hopefully in a few years. In a few years, yes, <laughs> in a few years. Um, Jeremy says, great idea to use contrast thread. Yes, it's one of those things. It can look really cool, actually. It can look really fab. So you kind of, that's your stitching. So this is your hem part. This is the inside of your garment. So this is what you would see. So you've got your... Let me zoom in. There we go. You've got your straight stitch with your little hop yeah. over. Now, you'll see this on the inside of your garment, but because I've got it, I've done it over the top of the overlocking, it doesn't really show. But if you've just got it on a double hem, for example, so you've just folded that over, you will see that bit of stitching on the inside. But again, if you are doing it with a matching thread, you're not going to notice. Uh, but if you want to do it with the contrast, then that would actually look quite cool. Uh, morning, Clive. How are you? Hope you're OK. Uh, love the idea of rainbow thread. I know, like a bit of rainbow, I have to admit. We've got the rainbow rib back in again, but it's going out very quick. And I'm kind of thinking, do I grab some? Do I grab some before it all goes? That's the question. So I hope that um, little kind of tutorial on the blind hem foot has helped demystify. It's one of those things that just have a go with. A bit like um, when we kind of did uh, using the stitch guide, you know, the stitch reference library for having a go with all of your machine or your different kind of stitches. Um, if you've done that, then you'll find the best stitch for the, the right stitch for the right job kind of thing. Um, and it's definitely worth having a play around with actually knocking up a few samples, maybe in some different kinds of fabric as well. So you can work out what kind of stitch settings are going to work best with the different kinds of fabric. So you'll need a longer stitch and maybe a slightly wider stitch to work with thicker fabrics. So if you've got some, I don't know, wool suiting or a bit of boiled wool lying around, have a go at doing a sample with some of that. If you've got a cotton lawn, as a, a, a kind of an alternative, a lighter weight fabric, have a go at using some of that as well. So just neaten or double turn your hem and have a little go and then keep that with all of the other stitches um, that you're kind of practicing and make a little note with it. Calico is brilliant because you can actually write on the calico as well, which is fab. Um, it's a great little one to have a go with. <laughs> oh, rainbow rib. <laughs> have we tempted you, Clive? There we go. Um, the kids saw the rainbow in the parcel and wanted it for themselves. <laughs> oh, Amy. No, no, I think that's best kept for you, actually, isn't it? I think you definitely should. Um, so do have a go with a blind hem foot. It's brilliant. So if you're doing things like uh, the Porsche trousers, the hem on the Porsche trousers would be brilliant done with the blind hem. Equally with the Cressida jumpsuit or even the Cressida as a dress, that would work really nicely. It's a nice little technique that you can use on that. Um, Helena, we've done, because it's a slightly curved hem, we've done a narrower sort of um, hem with that one. Um, so yeah, it's quite a nice one to do. You can also do it inside facings. It's a little bit trickier and maybe I'm going to do another tutorial to show you how to do that, but it's a nice way of doing it. Um, sorry, Catherine, I know we started without you, but don't worry, you'll be able to find it on YouTube later. So you will be able to catch up. Um, we're going to keep the... Uh, it's a bit of a short and sweet one today, purely and simply because I'm absolutely up to my eyeballs in it. I've got so much to do. We're planning on having um, a week off soon, so we're trying to make sure we're kind of catching up before then. Uh, we have still got uh, the deadline for applying for the production assistant is on Friday. So if you know anybody who's got really good Adobe skills that has a little bit of pattern cutting and maybe some sewing under their belt as well, do let them know. It's a full-time post, but we will consider part-time as well. Um, and tell them to get in touch. Uh, couldn't see the rib on the website. Where can I see it? It should, Clive, it'll be in the jersey fabric, knit, jersey knit fabric section. Um, I think we've still got some. I'm pretty sure we still have some. I don't think it's sold out already. Um, we're going to see if we can get some more as well. So, uh, oh, what machine do we have? Susan, I've got, this is a Janome M100 QDC. Um, it's kind of like a basic one. It's more of a quilting kind of machine because it came with the quilters pack. Um, but I would have a look and, and see what kinds of things you're looking for. If I could, if I was going to get one for myself, I would get one with a knee lift. Clive, you'll know what I'm talking about there. Um, 
because it's just so much nicer. Underbed trim, knee lift, it kind of borrows things from industrial machines. And knee lift is fab, it's got like a little hole here and it has like a little kind of lever that you just basically use your knee to lift the foot up and down, which is brilliant. So it just automatically lifts the foot up and down and leaves your hands free, which is fabulous. I love it. And it's the thing that's come over from industrial machines. Um, so if I was going to get one for myself. Also check the motor, check the strength of the motor. Uh, the, uh, the more impressive the motor, the heavier weight fabrics you'll be able to work with. Um, so it depends on what kinds of things you want to do. Uh, check for the number of decorative stitches because you may or may not need all of those. Um, so I'd have a little look around really. This one we got because it's an all rounder. It kind of pretty much does everything and it was really good for the studios. But have a look and see what, um, what you're interested in. Stick the question into our Facebook group actually I and mean, you'll probably get a few more replies there and maybe some recommendations of different models and makes. So have a look and see what you think. Um, I quite like Juki machines because they're nice and solid. They do a semi-industrial as well, which is a really nice one to use if you're doing lots of kind of straight sewing. But if you want something that's kind of like all round, then maybe a domestic machine is probably better. So have a little look. It's a bit like, who am I going to marry, really? Well, what, well yeah, obviously. But what kind of man? <laughs> I don't know what kind of man you want, or woman even. Um, so it's best to have a little look and kind of try things out. I know that uh, sewing machine shops and stuff like that are reopening again now. So I would try, if you can, try before you buy. And that way you'll have a much better idea. So I hope that's good. Oh, look, Catherine said she's just upgraded to a brother. There we go. Oh, Geraldine says you've never used your knee lift. <gasps> Sharp intake of breath there. I think you should definitely get that out and have a play with it. It can take a little bit of time to kind of get to grips with, but actually once you get into the habit of it, when I started using domestic machines, I was constantly going like this, thinking, where has it gone? Because it wasn't there. So uh, you do get used to it very quickly and they're very, very handy. Yeah, oh, Donna, she loves her knee lift as well. That's brilliant. That's really cool. Lovely. So hopefully people will put some recommendations for machines in here. We'll keep the thread going even when we've finished the video. Uh, so I hope that's been helpful. Get out and try, play with your sewing machines, see what they can do, have a play with the different kinds of feet. Do get your instruction manuals out because it will tell you all about it in there. Um, and we'll stick this up on uh, YouTube later. Need to, yeah, people said, I've got my knee lift, you've never used it. Oh my God, give it a go, you'll love it. You really will, it makes life so much easier, it really does. Um, I'm doing some told to Geraldine. <laughs> I'm being bossy now, yeah. Uh, Susan, oh, okay, never thought about that. Do patchwork as well, dressmaking. I like to know me treating it like buying a car. Do you know what? Exactly. Yes. There we go. You've got the foot up and down button on your brother machine. That's handy, but also you've still got to take your hand off and use the foot up and down kind of thing. With your knee, you've still got your hands there. So you can just lift your knee and get things in the right position. It's dead handy. But do you know what? It's whatever works for you. That's the most important thing because it's all about sewing and enjoying it really, isn't it? Uh, oh, lovely, what loads of comments coming through now. Brilliant. I am going to now get back to um, slaving over a hot computer, which is what I do most of at the moment. Not enough sewing, not enough sewing at the moment. But I hope you have a fabulous rest of the week. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh yes, tomorrow. Thank you. I've got my little prompt person here. Um, we're actually going to be on her chanda tomorrow. I don't know if anybody watches it. Um, I have to admit that I don't. But it will be really interesting to see who's on there and how it all works out because obviously sewing quarter's not there. We've done a couple of ones where we've kind of just sent them videos, but this will be the first time I'm, I'm actually going to be in the studio, albeit at a distance. So that will be really interesting. We're on at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. So I've got to be over there at stupid o'clock in the morning, getting ready, which would be cool. Um, so do watch us, let us know what you think. Um, you can stick it into uh, our group or even make a comment on Hochanda if you like what you see, that'd be really good. And maybe they'll have me back again, who knows? Um, so I must admit, I haven't actually watched Hochanda. So, well, other than bits and pieces, yeah. I've got bits and pieces, but it's not something that I've had on kind of in the background or anything like that. Um, so it would be lovely to be on there in person, actually. Uh, ooh, people do... Uh, 
people are watching her chanda that's good oh Teresa's what's her chanda it's the home of craft hobby and design things i think i can't remember what it stands for now it's it's a a, a kind of an acronym so um that would be really good yippee you'll be on her chanda love watching you say so. oh great that's good well i'm going to be on there with five patterns tomorrow i know we won't be demoing all of them but um, we'll be doing a couple of demos, so hopefully. I don't know quite how it works. Do people send in questions at Hochanda? Can you answer them live on air? I'm not quite sure. I don't know. That'll be quite fun. We'll, we'll have to see. We will find out and see, yes. Uh, is it on FB? I don't know. Craft, hobbies and arts. Yes, they do all kinds of different things, not just dressmaking. In fact, I don't think they do much dressmaking, actually. There's more quilting and cards and all kind of woodwork and all kinds of stuff they do on there, actually, which would be really interesting to see what else is on tomorrow. Um, so do, yes, look out for me tomorrow on Hochanda and we'll see you back here on Facebook and Instagram on Friday with our Fabric Friday. Um, have a fabulous week and we'll see you then. Take care and have some time sewing. <laughs>